Hello and welcome to Tip of the Week by CAD Tech Seminars. You can find us on the web at thebimguys.com. That is the B I M guys.com. We do Revit training, modeling, support, implementation. We also do Navis Works, clash detection, training, and implementation. If you have any questions, check us out on the web. What we're going to do now is talk about creating a custom winding stair or winder stair. And let's check it out and see how it works. Now, many times in Revit, if you go up top, you say stair. And uh, I'm using version 2017. It still has stair by sketch and stair by component. In the newer versions, or if you use an LT that does not have stair by sketch, you actually have component only. Now I'm going to hit stair by component. And what I'm going to do is start a stair. Now, when I start a stair, if I go straight to, to winder here, you'll see that when I pick it, it automatically kind of queues up for this set. Now I can place it in and I can go start to tinker with some of the adjustments over here in the properties and it'll let us fill out you know certain amount of parallels, fill it on corner, all kind of little things that you can adjust here to make things kind of uh, set up the way you want. So you'll notice that almost every one of these are winding because we did a single point and we did balance. So you, can, you can mess with it but what if this just doesn't fit your need? There's too much automation. I just want to pretty much draw what I want. You can do that, and it's not that hard. So let's give that a shot. Now I'm going to delete this guy out. So um, if you're not using a, um, if you don't want to use a winder, that's okay. Let's start back at the top again. Stair. I'm going to go stair by component. I'm just going to choose a regular residential stair. There you go. Fancy pants there. I select it. I go on up. I stop. Okay. Then I'm going to come on over here, and I pick, and I start to draw again. Now I've turned off the landing. So if I was to go turn the landing back on. What I do is just say landing, and I go A and B, and it puts a landing in there. So you can actually run without a landing, and that's usually what I do because I can move things around. So if I say grab this here, and I say I'm going to move it, and I move it from, let's say, maybe this end point to this end point, and I get it maybe where that's where I want it. Now, at this point, if I want to put a landing in, I hit landing, and I go A, B. And that's an easy way to kind of get, get things where you need it to be. Now, what we're going to do, though, is instead of putting a landing in, we're going to actually have Revit kind of just finish the stair up. Now at this point we've got the basics in here. I'm going to take this and I'm going to do something different. I'm going to use the convert. I'm going to convert it back to a sketch. Now I'm kind of going old school here but now I've, I've converted that back to a sketch and converted back to a sketch. Now it's telling me converted element cannot be turned back into a, uh, a component. So all we'll have to do is delete the stair and redraw it. So nothing to worry about there. I'll leave these warnings on because I do training. Close. Now uh, what we're going to do is take this bottom one, and we'll go up top, and since we're already told it to uh, convert it, now we're going to edit the sketch. So we're going to take what we have here and just kind of manipulate it a bit. I'm going to go ahead and take this guy, and I'm going to drag it up like so. So I get to a particular point. Now I'm going to maybe drag it a little bit further. Now, sometimes you may want to put in a reference plane or something, so I'll go architecture, and I'll put in a reference plane. I may start at this point right here, and I'll drag up at a 45. So what that's going to do is give us um, some type of reference, and I'll bring this up to it. Okay. Um, the next thing I'll do is I'm going to take and I'm going to grab this riser here, okay, and I may bring it all the way over to here. All right. Now it's still at those two points, and a little bit different, but that's going to be okay. I'm going to hit finish on that. Now what it's done is you'll see that it's actually created that stair. Now let's go check out what it's done. Um, I'm going to go to take some of these two, go ahead and hit edit on this again, edit sketch. Now I'm going to take this guy, I'm going to bring him up a little bit, and I'm going to bring him over. Bring this one up a little bit, and maybe bring him over. Okay, maybe bring this guy over a little bit. And if you want to, again, adjust the stair, all these things can be adjusted. Okay, I'm going to grab all this now, I'm going to move it up. And notice we have kind of full control over the stair and how it's being built. I'm going to go ahead and finish on that. Let's see, let's see what it's done. Let's go to 3D. And let's kind of ignore that stair. And you'll see over here we actually have a stair going up that you can see right there. So not too shabby. Let's go ahead and go back to where we were working a moment ago. You'll see, there we are. Now I want to grab this guy. We'll do the same thing. Let's go to Edit Sketch. I'll now grab this guy. I'm going to bring it over to here. Let me actually go ahead and see if I'm going to align these two. There we go. And we'll take this guy and bring him to here. All right. So now we have this guy and this guy. We might not line up exactly how we want. Let's go ahead and undo that one or two times. Let's bring this guy here and bring it to that. Let's say right there. Okay. 
grab this blue line over. If you don't bring this blue line over, it's going to bellyache. Let me show you what happens. I'm going to go ahead and finish right now. And what's going to happen is it throws a fit. If the center line does not touch the two risers, it throws a fit. See, it says invalid stair path. Let's hit continue on that. I'll grab this, drag it in and touch it. All right. Now, at this point, we'll do the rest for these. Take a moment, bring all these in. All righty. Let's go ahead and hit finish on that. So what we've done is now we've created two of these stairs. I'm going to go ahead and hit finish, and let's see what Revit does. Now, we do have a gap in there. So let's check out what we have now. We'll go to 3D. You can see how it's starting to build the stair. Now, what's happened is, notice we have, it stops and it goes up again. What is happening? This is kind of causing it to get all wonky. The reason being is we took out the landing. By taking out the landing, what's happened is it was calculating or assuming that the landing would give you that extra step up, but it, it's not there. So the stairs kind of freaking out. So let's take a look at adding it back in now. I'm going to go back to my plan view, browser, floor plan. I'll now grab this guy here, and I'm going to hit edit stairs. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to take this and pull it back a little bit. Let's do that again with the move command, make sure it's accurate. Grab these elements here. Let me go ahead and hit uh, edit sketch. I'll grab these elements here. I'm going to pull them down a little bit. Let's go ahead and move. Pull them down maybe about 8 or 12 inches, plus or minus. Now, what I'm going to do is add another one of these in. So I'm going to take this guy, I'm just going to copy it, or you can draw it in. Both work, copy, paste, and bring it down. Again, this is just giving you the concepts. You can refine the stuff as you go. Now, at this point, I'm going to also bring these in, say, a line with this edge, uh, that edge, okay? And I'll hit finish on that one. I'm going to do the same with this guy. Grab him, edit sketch. We'll say a line, this edge, and that edge. All right, let's go ahead and finish on that. So we've told it now. We've got a little bit more defined information. And let's see what we have. We're going to hit finish on that. <coughs> Cross our fingers, of course, because you know Revit sometimes can be uh, moody. And let's see what we have. I'll check it out in 3D. And notice what we have here. So it created it. Now it looks like we got a, a, a piece on the back side that's kind of squirreling out on us. But you can see how it. it started to create that element for us. So it may just be a matter of coming here, flattening it out just a little bit to make that thing happen. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can make that happen now. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to grab this element. I'm going to go over here and hit Edit Sketch. Now uh, I'm going to grab this guy again and Edit Path. And we have the path in here. You notice how we have this little piece here. I'm going to come over here and grab it. And I'm going to come over here and hit the Break command. I'm going to split it right there. Like, what is he doing? I'm going to take this guy and Height Correction, Auto Detect. I'm going to say Flat. Let's go ahead and finish on that. So there's all these little tidbits you can play with when you're customizing stairs. Let's see what happened now. So we've kind of changed the math of this thing a bit. And you'll notice how it actually changed what's happening there. So we were able to manipulate the stair. Now let me get rid of this guy. He's kind of in our way. Let's go ahead and delete him out. Um, on how that stair is actually set up. So it's giving us the ability to kind of adjust if need be. Like, well, this one's coming up too high. Ken, can we flatten that one out? Sure. We can take this guy and kind of go through the same process. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to grab this stair. I mean, the whole stair assembly. Edit stair. Now we'll grab this assembly, or this line work, edit sketch. And we can then set, set back and break these also. So I'll go back up here. I'm using the actual split command in Revit. And I pick a point here. Uh, I think I had 10 on the other. I have a 10 here. I'll grab this guy. And you can hit auto detect, or you can actually come in here and actually put in flat. You can also do auto height correction. I'll add one inch in here, or let's say two inches, so you can see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and finish on that. Let's go hit finish one more time and see if it blew up on us or not. Let's go to 3D. Looks like it left it off this time. It's decided it didn't want to play, or I put it on the ground. So you notice how we're able to play with these things. I'm not sure why it decided not to play with it. Um, so we'll go ahead and take that zero, zero off of the two inches and see if we can get it back. Let's go back to it. 
grab the assembly, we'll walk through it again. Edit stairs, click. Um, edit sketch, grab that nugget, and I'm going to zero him out. That way it should work. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and hit finish on that. And finish. And 3D. All right. So again, we have uh, the adjustment being built in now. You'll see we're a bit closer. So if I took that break and moved it back a little bit, eh, it might work out for us. We're going to have that little piece stick out. Again, some of these little things you can probably tweak just by cutting and slicing on the edges. But I wanted you to know that you can actually customize your stairs, as you can see right here. Now, this stair does have a side element to it. If we come over here and say, well, I want it to be open all the way around, open two sides, we change it. And you can see how it changes the math of the stair a bit. So we are getting some different results, but I want you to notice how we can customize the stairs to fit our needs. Now, many times when stairs are being done, you may not actually do 100% of the detailing in this um, in, in the stair itself. You may put the stair in so it represents correct like it is here. It may also represent uh, decent in a section when you cut a section. Um, let's say a building section, but when it comes to actually detailing the stair, you may actually come back in and, um, and detail it correctly. Go in here, put the right math, take this rail out, replace it with whatever you want. So that is some quick tips on how to create or edit winding stairs in Revit. So I hope you enjoyed the tip. If you have any questions or comments, you can check us out on the web at thebimguys.com. Thank you.